Hey guys, happy Tuesday afternoon. Brian Davis here from Spark Rental, and I am joined by Michael Kwan from Financial Alert. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much. It's a it's an honor to join you, Brian. Well, we are super excited to have you. Michael retired at 36, which is just an incredible feat. And you know, compounding that is the fact that he is married with two children, uh, which you know, a lot of people in the fire community. You know, they, they're they skeptical about, about people retiring early when they have a family, but you managed to do it. And not only did Michael retire young, but he's also heavily involved in real estate investing, which, of course, we love around here at Spark Rental. Uh, he is the founder of the website financiallyalert.com, which helps people reach financial independence and retire early. Uh, and he just published a new book, Fire Planner. So, Michael, let's rewind all the way to the very beginning to talk about where you started out. So you started your own business in your early to mid twenties, right? So I guess talk us through the early days, how that came about and you know what that looked like. Absolutely, Brian. So really quickly, just to give you a little backstory. Um, I grew up in a family, my parents got divorced around like, I think I was about 12 or so. And during that time, my world kind of just, you know, got shattered a little bit. And it really felt like, you know, I was going from kind of lower middle class to just like poverty. Like, I was not at poverty, but it felt like it, right? Cause like all of a sudden the house got, you know, shrunk down in half and like, it really felt like I was scrimping and having to, you know, do things that other people weren't. And I noticed that a couple of uncles didn't have to go to work. I'm like, you know, why do my parents have to go to work respectively to each of their jobs? And like, why do I have to like, you know, work so hard so long? And so I was curious. And so I looked at these two uncles and I was like, you know, what are they doing? Because they never have to go to work. And I realized at some point that they were financially independent. So just wait, even back then when I was like 10 or 12, I kind of noticed that there's something different about them. So fast forward into college, I was like, you know what? I really want to choose a major that's going to allow me to create a business and then be able to create financial independence myself. And so that was kind of like the beginning thoughts, at least, of creating this sort of a business that can fuel that lifestyle. And so when I got out of college, didn't know what I wanted to do. I was like a lot of college students, it's like, well, I've got this degree, but now what? Right. So what happened was I was lucky enough to graduate right at the end of the dot-com boom. So this is when, uh, you know, uh, all the dot-com companies were getting money left and right from all these different financing companies and like Amazon and Webvan and all these crazy names were just popping up out of the Yahoo, you know, like site and Google at the time. And so I cut the tail end of this and I ended up getting a job in IT only because I was a gamer. So because I was taking apart computers and whatnot, there's a natural transition to being able to help infrastructure and support PCs and servers and networks. So that's how I ended up in the IT business. And then unfortunately, you know, 9-11 occurred shortly thereafter and it essentially imploded, you know, the entire economy. And my company that was a startup in that space, unfortunately, was hit really hard as well. And so there was a series of layoffs, probably about six or so that I experienced. And it was just an awful time because, you know, I was in IT, so I had to actually disable my friends' accounts when they were going in and getting laid off. They'd come back mm -hmm. and like I was the one that actually locked them out of their computers and like, you know, make sure they couldn't get access back to anything they had. And just to see that look on their face and the defeat was just so heart shattering. And I was like, you know what, this is terrible. Like, I need to do something. I need to do something different. And do I want to stay around for the seventh round of layoffs? Because guess what? I'm potentially on the chopping block at some point. Sure. So what happened sure. was I grabbed a couple of friends and I brought them into my office and I said, you know what? We're the only profitable division in our company because we're going out there supporting infrastructure for other companies. And, you know, what if we did this on our own and not just sit around and hope that things are going to work out? And so that's exactly what we did, Brian. We, uh, I was about 25 at the time. We ended up leaving. There was like four of us at the time. We just started up our own IT and infrastructure support company. And we just got down on our hands and knees and literally were plugging in cables, setting up computers, setting up servers, and really putting a ton of sweat equity into this startup. So we literally only put up $2,000 of cash each. Oh, and wow. we just really grounded out for 10 years. And um, during that time, you know, things fortunately picked up slowly over time. We were able to grow that. And by the time we were done at the end of the 10 years, we had grown to a couple different sites. We had a site in San Diego and then one in Chicago, and we had a decent client base. Um, and then at that point, we decided to take an exit only because the way that the computer industry was going, there was everything was going to the cloud. So we had to decide, do we want to pivot again 
or do we want to potentially merge with someone else and maybe take some equity out the table? So that's what was the ultimate stimulus for exiting the company. And then I took some of that equity and put that into real estate. So that's kind uh -huh. of like the, the whole engine, right? You know, I created the business, um, spent a lot of time focusing on that. And I'll just tell you really quickly. I mean, you hear like a tech startup, right? I wasn't like this software, you know, genius or anything that got this crazy unicorn exit, right? It was more of a service type of business, right? So I was getting a, you know, salary from my business, but it was not like a huge salary. So, you know, some years I might have been 70 grand, 80 grand, 90. At the end, maybe just finally hitting six figures, but not even that much. And then I say that to say that you could do the same thing in a corporate, you know, position. So that's what I really want to share with people is that being able to be early retirement and financial independence is not necessarily a function of, you know, creating a business. Sure, it could help. And there was definitely some equity upside to that, uh, but it's not a requirement. So, you know, that's what I really like to share with people um, in terms of being able to go out there and achieve fire. It's, it's possible for anyone in any situation. Well, so there, there's so much that you said there that I want to <laughs> I want to dive into. First of all, so I love the way that you open that story talking about your your uncles who didn't work when you were growing up, and you're sitting there scratching your head as as a little kid saying, you know, <laughs> why don't why aren't they working? <laughs> like, you know, it's it's kind of a rich dad poor dad kind of uh, origin story, right? Um, and it, yeah, it really helps when you have role models in your life that show you that you don't have to follow the straight and narrow path that so many people follow. Um, and I also love that you said, you know, that you never had a, a massive income, right? You know, you, you weren't one of those guys with like a, a $250,000 salary for, you know, year after year after year, you can just plug all that you know, into investments and then uh, retire young. Uh, you know, you, you had a, a middle-class salary for your entire career and, um, and still managed to reach financial independence and retire at 36. Now you I presumably had a, a payday <laughs> at, at the end when, when you sold your business. Uh, but it sounds like you bootstrapped the company. It sounds like no uh, venture capital yeah. or anything like that. Uh, it sounds like you and, and your buddies just kind of ran with it <laughs> and, and, and made it happen all with your own sweat equity and, and your own cash savings. Yeah, it was absolutely that. And, you know, knock on wood, we were very fortunate to be able to you know, be successful from the get-go because a lot of times when you start a business and I've started multiple business after that, you don't always hit a, you know, a success right out of the gate, right? There's no. <laughs> you know, 10 that don't work before you get the one that does. Yeah, that's, that's definitely, um, there's some success bias in the media when you read about entre entrepreneurship. All you read about are the success stories, right? You don't read about, you know, the, the hundred failures for every one unicorn <laughs> that was out yeah. there. Um, so let's let's rewind for a second. So while you were growing your business, you were you had a high savings rate, I assume, a high personal savings rate. You were investing a lot of your money. What were you investing in during those times? And um, you know, how did you manage your money in a way that enabled you to keep that high savings rate and invest a, a presumably a high percentage of your your income? Yeah, you know what was really interesting was right out of college, I realized that. All of a sudden, I was getting a salary at this company that I started working for. And I realized that, you know what, I'm already pretty comfortable at a college level, right? Like, I wasn't like, you know, scrimping, eating ramen noodles every single day. But at the same time, like, all of a sudden, I got this big influx of income. And so I'm like, you know what, why don't I spend some of it, have some fun with it, and then I'll just save the rest. And so I really got very conscious and intentional about saving a big chunk of that. And then after that, every subsequent raise, I did the same exact thing. And I literally made it a pattern. And so I, I share that kind of methodology with people as like almost like a raise ladder, right? You're stepping on every single raise that you get in the future. And it becomes like a ladder that you can climb on. And all of a sudden, you can really start saving a big chunk of your uh, income. And the, the nice thing is that because you've already pre-thought about it, it doesn't really take away anything. It's not like you're taking away anything because you haven't really felt it yet. You haven't really, is it really your bank account? So if you're automatically putting it aside into investments or some sort of a savings account and just sweeping it to the side, then you can just enjoy your current level of living and then even have lifestyle creep but, and at the same time, increase your savings and investing. So that's exactly what I did. But I will tell you this, Brian, what was fascinating was I literally was doing that for 10 years and during the time from 2001 for the next 10 years, literally my money did nothing. It was literally just sitting there essentially with like a 
I don't know, one to two percent return <laughs> over the span of like probably like ten years. Really, the great news, <laughs> the great news after that was the next ten years exploded, and then all of a sudden, you know, it made up for the lost time. So I say that to say that being able to be, you know, very incrementally disciplined you don't know when the market's going to go up you don't know what's going to go down but if you're disciplined you can catch the upswings and the downswings and be very you know find profit along the way absolutely and that's something that you know we, we don't talk much about stock investing on spark Rental. We, we focus more on real estate but when we do talk about stock investing we typically talk about um, automating your investments you know using robo advisors um, setting up automated uh, weekly or semi uh, monthly contributions so you can take advantage of dollar cost averaging and you know like you said not trying to time the market just co continually putting money into the market and letting it rise on its own uh, so you're not even really thinking about it and you're not you know you're not lying awake at night you know nibbling on your fingernails when, when the market goes down <laughs> either so all right well so you said that when you sold your business you got heavily into real estate investing and you know since that is an area of, of passion for us you know tell us a little bit about what types of real estate investments you got into, what your strategy was, you know, tell us all about it. Yeah. So the interesting thing, Brian, was, you know, going back to my uncles, what I finally did realize eventually was that the uncles that weren't working had a ton of real estate. And so uh, I was like, you know what, I definitely want to do real estate because obviously they've done very well with it. So I'm going to try to model and emulate what they did. And so one of them was you know, heavily into residential. Another one was heavily into commercial. So being that I was just starting out, started with residential. And, you know, I literally took probably a good four or five years just studying real estate and trying to understand, you know, cash flow. What is it? What is a good deal even look like? Right. For the longest time, I'm like, how do you even know if it's a good deal? And so I really took time to really dig and understand the finances. And then probably a little bit too long. I could have probably, you know, pulled the trigger and learned some things before that. However, I waited up and I was watching actually the bubble. Um, pre 2008 and I just watched everything and people were buying things left and right. It was, it was going nuts. People were like, Oh, you should buy this. And I was like, yeah, but it's not cash flow. And they're like, what's cash flow? It doesn't matter. It's just going to go up like 50 grand in the next like five months. And I'm like, okay, maybe and I always goes up, right? It never goes down. <laughs> it never goes down. It never goes down. And I got, I almost, I was almost like, Oh, well, maybe I should get into this. But you know, I looked at the numbers and like, they don't make sense. So I waited, I waited, I waited, waited. And then when 2010, Came around, I started snapping up prop or tried to snap up properties. There was a lot of time. Cool, there's a lot of investors that were still trying to go get properties, but I eventually got my first, you know, couple, still have them to the day. I mean, they, they, they perform fantastically. And most recently, I just purchased my first short term rental a couple months ago. And that thing is congratulations. Just yeah. So definitely want to do more of that. But I think with real estate now, there was a time where I was more of a kind of active stock investor where i was trying to choose individual companies but then it went more of the path route and i just put in an index and what i tell people now is like you know if you really take the time to just be a passive stock investor you can get that side of the upside but then spend the rest of the time really studying real estate because i think that's where you can really create quick you know awesome passive income but also some really quick equity increases in your net worth as well yeah and that, that's a great point that you know, you you can automate your stock investments entirely and not spend any time on it whatsoever. Whereas real estate investments, if you're buying properties directly, you know, if you're going to be on the deed, you can't do that. It, it it takes time both to learn the knowledge and skills you need to invest. It also takes time to find good deals, and it takes time to manage <laughs> rental properties. So it is much more time intensive to invest in real estate. But you can also earn those outsized returns. You you, you can earn those market beating returns. So it's one more way that real estate and stocks complement each other well. Uh, you know, you can automate your stock investments, don't have to spend any time on it whatsoever, um, and then and get market in, uh, returns on it, right? You know, you mimic the market with index funds. Uh, and then with your real estate, you can uh, be a little more proactive with it and create that income. Uh, but it does take some time investment on your part. So let me ask you this. You launched a website uh, post retirement, I believe, called financiallyalert.com. Uh, tell us a little bit about what Financially Alert is, what it does, how it helps people, you know, the mission. Uh, you know, what's, what's the lowdown here? Yeah, so with Financially Alert, I started about five or six years ago. And essentially, what it was is once I finally retired from the traditional career and I wasn't doing the nine to five, I wasn't going to the office, 
you know, I found myself home with my kids and that was really fulfilling. And at the same time, I wanted something more, right? Because I, I wanted some connection back to the adult world. I wanted to be able to grow something new. And so basically Financial Alert was a hobby of mine to basically go out there, share the information, you know, that I'd learned over the years and just share my story so that, you know, it can help other people on their path to financial independence. And so that's what Financially Alert is really all about, is about helping to serve other people. And I will, you know, I'm pretty open, like, you know, having two uncles that were financially independent, that's pretty unique, right? And so I like to say that that was my unfair advantage. And so by, you know, putting out into the public, you know, on public domain, you know, stories and strategies and methodologies of how to reach financial independence, I want to give you an unfair, unfair advantage that you may not have had, because most people don't have that. So that's what the mission is all about, is really helping to bring financial independence, financial freedom to people that may have not otherwise had it, you know, unless they were, you know, very fortunate like I was. No, that's, that's great. And I'm sure it's a fun post-retirement gig too. Uh, do some writing, maybe bring in a little extra income on the side. Uh, and you actually, you just published a book, right? Fire Planner? Uh, yeah. Is so it about to be published planner, yeah. or is that, did it just come out? It literally just came out um, last month in May. And so it's been, it's actually exceeded my wildest um, expectations and has been selling very well. And I think what it is, is it's really hitting a nerve with people because people are really interested on, you know, getting that freedom for themselves so that you can really live life on your own terms. That's what it's all about. And my whole idea with this, the fire planner was to make fire accessible to anyone. And so we literally go through, I take you through the mindset that you really need to have because mindset really, it's all about what our beliefs are that trigger our actions. And then of course our actions are what give us our results. So I really walk you through that first and foremost, that mindset. And then we talk about very nitty gritty details. We talk about different paths of fire, whether it may be the extreme savings and investings, that's one pathway. Real estate investing, of course, is another fantastic way. And then entrepreneurship is, is another way. And so doing all three potentially, or maybe just a couple, or maybe just one, and really letting it you know be a choice because everyone's a little bit different. Yeah, and that's a great point that you know it's not either or. You know, when you're pursuing financial independence, you can combine a lot of these pathways. Um, you know, I mean, I, I I am obviously a real estate investor, <laughs> of course, and an entrepreneur with, with Spark Rental, uh, and I am a stock investor, and uh, and I have uh, I do side gigs and I do freelance writing on the side. Uh, and you know, you have taken a similar path where you've combined a lot of these different forms of income uh, and investments. And uh, you know, not only is there nothing wrong with that, but it's <laughs> it, you get some advantages when you combine these different streams of revenue, um, you know, both on the active income side and on the passive income side. So, so I want to be sensitive to your time here, um, but before before we let you go, I just wanted to ask, you know, what are your your favorite, most important tips for anyone out there who's pursuing fire, perhaps with real estate, perhaps not? I mean, you know, what are what are the core lessons that you think everyone needs to know and really internalize you know, as they pursue fire. Yeah, you know, I think the core thing that I just want to share with people is that if you're interested in financial independence, financial freedom, it's really out there for the taking. And and we live in a world now that is really set up to really, I think, capitalize on opportunities. And so I just really I really want to share with people that it's possible and it doesn't have to be you know, you don't have to compare yourself to other people. Do it your own way. Do it that do it in the way that aligns with your own values and do it in a way that, you know, potentially is balanced so that you're not really putting yourself in a in a state of maybe um, need. Like, you know, I, I see some sometimes in the media, you see like some of these fire personalities, right? And they're living on like twenty five thousand dollars a year or something. And it's like, well, yes, does that work? Absolutely. But is that for everyone? Probably not. And I just want to say that, you know, there's other ways to do it where you can essentially, you know, have your cake and eat it too, is what I want to essentially share. There's a way that you can do it that really aligns with your own values and it is possible. So really take that time to really understand your own money story. What's that mindset? What are some of those limiting beliefs that are maybe stopping you from investing in real estate and find those resources, go to Spark Rental, learn, you know, go through your video course, right? That you have that walks people through the path of understanding real estate investing and how to actually participate and take some action. You know, at the end of the day, if you don't take action, you can study till you're blue in the face, but nothing's going to happen. So 
take some of that time to take action, fall on your face, fail forward. And as soon as you get the result that you're looking for, you just do more of it and more of it. And all of a sudden you're, you're kind of looking back and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how fortunate I am. But it does stem from action. It does stem from belief. And so take some time to, you know, culture that and, and have some fun at the same time. Yeah, no, it, that's a great answer. Um, you can you can have your cake and eat it too, to some extent. I mean, you know, you can do things like house hacking to live for free and, and put all of that extra money that you would be spending on housing towards investments. I mean, my wife and I have no housing payment. We live abroad um, and living abroad, not only we get free housing, but, you know, it's also a much lower uh, cost of living. Uh, and, you know, and that aligns with our values. We love international travel. We want our daughter to grow up, um, you know, a citizen of the world. So, yeah, I mean, to your point, you can you can have it all, uh, but it does take some some thoughtfulness on your part, and it does take the right mindset. Uh, and you can't necessarily have the the stereotypical white picket fence house and the dog named Fido. And uh, you know, if if you are going to do if you're going to pursue these different kinds of goals like financial independence, uh, you do have to think a little bit differently about money. So. Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we did put a, we've got a link here in the comments to Financially Alert. Please check it out. Uh, and of course, we'll put that in the show notes uh, when we release this as a podcast tomorrow. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining us and sharing us with us your story. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Brian. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun. Well, we'll have to have you back on sometime soon. All right. Uh, in the meantime, we will see you guys next Tuesday at two o'clock Eastern. Uh, send us your comments and let us know what you want to hear about next week. We will catch you next Tuesday, two o'clock. Have a good one, guys.